Good afternoon, this is Arne Koes from the Verkeminaat in Arun and uh, today we are looking at couching lances with arets. Hence we're in all sorts of partial armor. Now, usually we think of lances being held sort of here and then the graper is behind your hand and any van plate you might have, this is a van plate, might be ahead of your hand. And then when you couch the lance under your armpit like this, of course the graper sits in front of the arete and that takes the impact of the hit and your hand would be here. This is the usual way we see it depicted. This is the usual way it's currently done when people use these lances. And that makes sense, it's easy to do. However, if you don't have one of these, which is pretty much something you see used in jousting because they're very awkward to ride around with, and um, there's one big problem when you don't have one of those and that is when the lances cross in fencing the opponent's lance might slip down the lance and hit you exactly here and just barely miss your gauntlet which is all too easy so there is um, a bit of interest in one specific depiction uh, in particular from the battle of san romano picture by uh, uccello but there is a few more uh, mostly italian um, where we see people couching a lance differently namely our house italian will now Augusto de Bourbon, will now demonstrate how it is depicted. He's holding the lance underneath on the butt side of the graper. Granted the grapers were bigger in the picture. And he's wearing a, a fairly early rondel based coucher here on his armor and he has an earlier red. So when he then couches it in the Italian style, you end up like this. Now this has one advantage, or at least I assume it's an advantage. Um, that is that when there is a fencing going on with another lance, this one is of course with a coronel and it's coming down, then the graper doesn't just take the impact, but it also actually protects the hand, especially with the larger ones in the image. So that is a, an assumed advantage. There is however a few issues with this technique. It's rather awkward. So you can see that Augusto manages quite well and there is a lot of angle in his elbow. And this is exactly what we see in the image. We also see that the actual lance is sitting more on his elbow rather than in his armpit. So it's sort of just about there. And this is distinct to how I myself would usually couch a lance in my armor with my elbow further down and it's more in my armpit, which gives me a lot of grip. But this is very much what we see in the image that we're discussing. However, there is one slight little problem with this technique. So, as you can see, Augusto is quite happy to do this. If I try to do this myself, I have a bit more of an issue with all my gauntlets and everything else to get it there, but I can sort of manage in my armor. However, here we have Nick, and Nick has a slightly later still Italian arm harness. So if he takes a lance, you'll see that it is distinctly harder to do for him. And that has to do with how far he can bend his elbow. So with the more pronounced protection on the inside of the elbow, there might be a limit to how far he can bend his elbow. And that also means it becomes harder for him to even grab the lance. Now the other problem we have is whether they're actually trying to hold on or just have their hand there that when they flick it back up that they just catch the lance again. This is a difficult question to answer what we're looking at in that respect. So, now another thing that is quite an important part of using a lance is that of course you have the, the graper sitting in one particular place. Now that means you have a specific reach of the length of the lance which can be quite considerable. And Sometimes there is advantages to actually having a shorter lance so you have more time before it hits the opponent in which you will be doing defenses with the lance like it is a rapier or something where you're fencing with the lances itself. In order to do this we are advised in several fencing manuscripts to shorten the lance and this means that we're deliberately placing the lance further back so that the graper is sticking out the back. Now, this is especially clearly described in German sources, however, we also see it in Italian sources. So when we're doing that, 
we might very well in, in that case also bring the lance further back and end up with our hand behind the arete in that sense and getting this sort of a, a position and we do have depictions where we see the handle clearly depicted behind the hand about that far and this might be part of why we see people ending up with their lances behind their arete because they're shortening them at this last moment because of course you might need to make this decision in combat rather suddenly where well, you thought you were going to use a long lance and um, and you thought you were going to do this and then you all of a sudden go like oh i need to defend something and you bring it further back and bring it on the arete and use it like this so that might be one of the reasons why we see that and maybe how this technique where you do use the graper is deliberately um, developed out of such an occurrence from shortening the lance so do not confuse a short lance in the sense of a short shaft with a shortened lance in the sense of holding it shorter than usual so what might be quite significant about this is that the arm harnesses that we see this depicted with this technique of holding the hand behind the actual arete de curas is usually seen with specific arm harnesses that have for instance rondelles on the counter the counter being the elbow here and this might mean that there's more freedom of movement on the inside whereas the slightly later and more developed counters of the italian arm harness often have this flange here which sits in between and depending on exactly how that flange is made which varies it might to some degree restrict a little bit of movement this usually just doesn't become a problem in most fighting you do climbing running jumping climbing trees you don't end up really noticing that it's much of an impediment but for this very extreme technique it might become one and there we see that if we both yeah now this is my german armor it's completely different i have floating counters and there is sort of a different point at which the the arm says no no more and um, this very small difference might just mean that this type of counter is more set up to do a technique like this than that one and that might also have a bit of a, a bit of to do with why certain people decide to do this and other people don't so there might be a regional preference in whether this is ever done at all um, or uh, mixed into the possibilities of how to catch a lance couch lance um, as opposed to just never doing it at all um, the the other thing we see is that not only do you need to have mobility of the uh, of the elbow we also need mobility of the wrist now my later German gauntlet has this articulation but we see mostly uh, hourglass gauntlets uh, where you have this hourglass shape uh, depicted with this technique and that means that the the wrist can kink a little bit more differently but it's especially uh, Italian mitten gauntlets you can also have a little bit of a uh, problem with the wrist mobility as well and that all kind of adds up to just how easy it is to do this technique or not and this might be why it is relatively rarely seen but it is definitely seen in multiple authors multiple artists and also multiple times by the same artist like Uccello for instance and this means that it isn't really just an error of the um, of the artist. We definitely also shows the regular technique, um, and all these artists do, as far as I'm aware, at least definitely most of them do. And this means that we end up with uh, being able to probably rule out that it's just an error. It seems very deliberate in some very high-end pieces of art where they're putting in a lot of effort to even get some perspective right in very uh, at that point still quite sophisticated ways so we're we're probably looking at a real thing that is just something we don't quite know yet why they did it and we have a few ideas but it's of course very difficult to be sure so it just kind of goes like yes this is possible yes it probably has a a, a an application and a reason uh, at least we cannot uh, we cannot rule it out as an impossibility because apparently we can get into the position so uh, at least we cannot just say like oh Richard just got it wrong and it's just impossible no it's not impossible now everything else why how when in particular is it specific to uh, a specific approach angle is it specific to a uh, specific opponents that's a good question so i hope we'll figure that out at some point so over 
20 odd years that I've been involved with the discussion on this image that keeps cropping up every, every so often, uh, people ponder what this might be. And uh, some other suggestions have, of course, uh, been uh, done. So one of the suggestions is that they were couching like this, and then due to the impact, this situation changed. There's several issues with this suggestion. First of all, quite often they're not impacting yet. They're not at the target yet, as we can see the other end of the lance in the image. So that's not being depicted. Moreover, even if we would assume that, if that would happen, there is actual instances in jousting that we've seen in historic solid lance jousting where the graper has actually jumped the arret just from the recoil in the lance and the whole lance moving and bending. However, your hand is still ahead of it. If you move the lance, not so much your hand. If it moves your hand with it, then it's still ahead of the graper anyway. Even if you manage to move it to here, the graper needs to be ahead. So the moment you see the graper in front of the hand, you know that it's not the recoil of the lance causing this. So that is fairly definitive, I think. And again, this suggestion, of course, crossed various people's minds over the last few decades, but it's, it becomes quite obvious when you actually start looking into it and trying it out with your armor on. So it's definitely not gonna be the explanation of why we see this. Secondly, um, we, we know that the regular use of the lance is more widely shown in general. But this is also very clearly seen in Italian art as well. So what we're not saying is that it is supposed to be like this always. This is just a sort of a, an, more than just an anomaly. It is a specific thing to do. However, most, by far most, couching is seen like this. So that is definitely uh, not wrong in any way. We're not claiming that, that's not really the point. Um, it's just that this stranger position uh, has needed some more explanation. Now you notice that you use your upper arm or maybe even your elbow a little bit more to aim the lance with it and you're not holding onto it for dear life. Uh, this is also an ability to be able to release the lance if something happens. Um, so this might be a part of that. There's also techniques where you suddenly disengage the lance and for instance push it on the floor. This might be easier from such a position. So, now you've seen me uh, try and actually hit things with this particular technique. Well, I managed somehow. Um, I found it very, very awkward. Um, well, partly because I'm not used to doing it, obviously. But there is a few specific issues that you have with it. There is a, a bit more of a necessity 
to already have the lance on the arrest. Because you're holding it further down, that means that there is an even longer arm above your hand. So any tipping of the lance is harder in your hand to hold on to. And this is hard to deal with regardless with lances of original weights and sizes. Um, historic war lances are pretty long, definitely over three meters, 10 foot. Um, they are definitely over that pretty much all the time. And they really go to 16 foot lengths quite a lot as well. So it's a big range. The point being that once you're holding something like this, it becomes very difficult to hold on to when it makes any tip whatsoever. You need to create a lot of torque in your hand. So that was definitely difficult. So what I found I needed to do was actually balance it against my height. Now I have done this before with, uh, with lances on a helmet as well. And it can be done and it can be useful. Um, now then you actually put the lance on the arete, or at least I did, before you lower it and then you let it go down. Now this first bit is quite easy as you still have it in your hand and then you need to make the, the actual couching roll where you kind of let it fall onto your arm and then you can kind of hold on to it here. This might also explain why this finger on some of the depictions is a little bit unclearly uh, shown. Um, and where it actually ends up and where the thumb ends up. It's a bit varied. Now from here I can still aim it just by moving my elbow. Now what happens though is that I need to turn my body a bit more readily. And this means that it's more likely that my allowance is coming down roughly in the area where my horse's head would be. So I need to angle my horse to such a degree that my lance is not going to interfere with my horse's head. So I had to ride a little bit more sideways. The other thing that, uh, that you see is you, you see that I actually got it about here on the first hit impact. And you actually see in here the lance come back and actually hit the arete, the, the graper hits the arete and takes the impact. So that worked as, as it says on the tin basically, this is what it's supposed to do. Um, aiming, once I got it in the uh, in the cradle, so to speak, if you use the film vernacular, wasn't too bad. The only thing is that because it's lying directly on the arete, you get a lot of bounce in the lance. And this is a well-known phenomenon. So this is going to give you a certain up and down uh, accuracy of your lance. And it's, it's about an area this big. I don't think you can actually make it much smaller than that reasonably that you can hit a target about this, this large. Mm -hmm. But for instance, if you're trying to hit somebody in the vision slit, it's very easy to kind of just have the lance bounce, bounce around in front and hit somewhere in his head instead. So that is a, a level of accuracy that in some cases can matter because of the flex in the lance. Um, you also need to commit to this type of couch. So you need to kind of let it fall in there. Getting it back up, even if you're not grabbing it very much, is very easy by you just bringing your elbow down and grabbing it. And it's, it's quite easy to grab it even with gauntlets, and uh, relatively secure. Now, one of the things you need to bear in mind is that bringing your hand down over the graper is a lot easier than over a van plate, because of course a graper can be a lot smaller. But as a general rule, this can be an issue where you could lose a lance. So doing this is a bit of a uh, something you need to do with, with care. But when you're setting it on your hip, like is the, the medieval go-to carrying of a lance, and whilst you're just carrying it around, it's relatively easy to do this. And then the, the lance is relatively upright, and you can basically just pop it in there and then come down at, at leisure. So to some degree, when you're still here, it is relatively relaxed. And this might be important with particularly heavy lances that you're just not carrying the weight. You're literally carrying it on your arete at the moment. I don't know if that's a factor if you have particularly thick lances because the lances in the Battle of San Romano depictions are quite thick, especially around the grip. Um, there is a grip cut into it that they're not using. We can see the grip facets, probably from either a draw knife or an ax, uh, where they made it into the lance. Now, this might mean that they are able to carry a heavier lance around without getting tired. However, this lowering, even with these pine lances, I was really struggling with my wrist to carry those. 
Um, these are considered heavy uh, to, uh, to a lot of people uh, in the jousting community, but of course, if you compare them to originals, they're jousting lances, they're pine, they're not the heaviest. And uh, I struggled a lot with the ash lances we happen to have around, especially because the, we cut the butts um, basically just too short. I mean, the queue was just not long enough to actually um, reach my arm. So uh, we would have to adjust one to see if that's possible, but I think my wrist won't take it. Um, so I'm having a bit of trouble uh, with a particularly long lance, which is not an issue when I just use the arete regularly. So, um, yeah, I think it's doable. I managed to not only get the couch multiple times on my first attempt, I managed to hit a target, which was about 12 centimeters by 20, I think. So that is five inches by eight, if I'm not miscalculating right now. Um, so that's, that's good enough. And I think I could have done smaller if I really wanted to. Um, the main thing was to line up the horse in the short distance available. Um, so, yeah, I think a bigger graper really will help if this disc is just larger. It will make this easier, I think. The main issue I'm having is wrist mobility and elbow mobility. And uh, that makes it a little bit awkward. And I think you need to be closer to your horse's head in terms of the angle that you can attack at in order to be able to do this. I also find it slightly more difficult to let the horse canter through my left hip to have my left hip align particularly well with the motion of the horse's back. So um, this might be more tricky uh, if you're riding a bit less experience with riding in armor in particular. As you do this tip then you can collapse your left hip and then you can have have some trouble that the horse might not canter properly or might not react the way you want it to be. So it is not entirely something you should just um, uh, attempt with abandon. <laughs> but I think if you bear it in mind, it's probably easy enough. But you might find that the horses uh, would like freedom in their backs to move into a left lead canter, for instance. Um, so bear that in mind if you're ever gonna try it. Um, in general, um, you even though your elbow is up, and that might mean your shoulder might be slightly higher or lower, you should not have a tip in your torso. And this has a lot to do with aiming the horse behind the lance. It's quite doable. So having high elbows is very widely seen in medieval art with couching lances in particular when arets are uh, in widespread use. Now this is not just the use of the hand behind the aret like this where the elbow is high. It's also seen in depictions where the lance is carried in the regular way with the hand in front of the graper and arete. Uh, and you still can have a relatively high elbow. In particular, if you're hitting dragons or infantry or anything lower than you, then obviously the elbow comes up. And it also depends on the, the target direction left to right. So that's not specific to this technique that your elbow is up. Now, uh, it, and one thing that I just wanted to reiterate, if you look at San Romano, the, the, the Uccello paintings, you see that there's a, a handle cut into the lance, which suggests that they mean to hold it there. So that needs to be borne in mind, that this technique is not what the lance was necessarily designed to be used at, but something that people did anyway. So they have the choice built into the weapon itself. And of course we see loads of this type of uh, use of lances in art. Now one more thing, which is really curious, and I think this is really interesting, then there is this depiction of a lance with a van plate and a graper being held behind the graper. So that either means he has double protection or the protection wasn't really the reason to do this. Um, so. Yeah, why they do this, I think is very much still an open question. That you can do this, perhaps not so much. And of course, we've seen these depictions for a few decades, so everybody knows they're around and everybody thought they were weird, I think. But uh, well, they can be used. I still don't like it, to be honest. I'll stick to my regular way of doing it. But it was an interesting little, uh, little sidetrack to look at. Thank you very much.